my name is Eric Arlt. I'm the um, the uh, sales manager here at WFG here in Arizona. And uh, again, we're in our third week of our ongoing um, educational series. Um, and again, this is going to be something that we're going to stay consistently. I'm not sure if we'll keep it up this time and this date, um, but we're going to have all of these uh, educational series with mostly probably Aaron Lacey here. Um, and then uh, there'll be times that I'll jump in as well. But um, without further ado, I want to introduce to you guys Aaron Lacey, if you don't already know know him a little bit about his background. Aaron is, um, he works for our sister company, West, um, which is part of WFG. Um, and it, uh, Aaron is our marketing technology director here in Arizona. And he's a Inman contributor. He's an Inman ambassador. Um, he is a, what do you call yourself? I'm sorry, you said you were gonna text it to sorry, me. Sorry, Eric, I didn't text you. Uh, I'm a psychology driven digital marketing uh, trainer. Uh, coach isn't that great? Yeah. Oh, so seriously, um, the best job title I've ever heard in this industry. Yeah, so, uh, that's awesome. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Okay, but so I'm I'll, super excited for you guys, and I'll kick it off, uh, kick it over to Aaron right now. So thank you. Awesome, Eric. Uh, thank you so much for that that introduction. And yeah, so uh, in, in short, I help I help real estate agents go from good to great by identifying blind spots in their business because you don't know what you don't know, you know. So um, that that's really what it's all about. I've spent uh, 20 years in the space. I have my broker's license in Arizona. I work in multiple different states, uh, high-end areas. I work in the Bay Area. I work with a lot of the high-end brokerages um, where the average home price is $2 million plus. Um, and so I work with one of the top agents in the entire country, uh, actually, in that area, um, who takes more listing, more listing volume than any other agent in the country. And so, I, you know, I get to, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot, it's very challenging as well because there's constantly things that are, that are evolving and changing growing, uh, the way that we need to present ourselves, the way that we need to differentiate uh, our value proposition, right? What we're, how we're leveraging, uh, you know, marketing technology, what we're doing to brand ourselves uh, and stay top of mind constantly is evolving and changing every year. And sometimes every six months, every quarter, especially right now. I mean, here we are going through a pandemic, which has changed everybody's lives, whether we even realize it or not. I mean, we're going to be talking about this for decades to come you know and so i've got a two and a three-year-old kid uh kids uh right now and they have no idea what's going on but they're gonna go wait daddy you mean we live through this crazy pandemic yeah we did um and so kudos to you guys for still staying in the pocket for still leveling up i mean the fact that you're here right now just shows your commitment to your business um so this is absolutely key that we continue to grow evolve and learn and educate ourselves um and so i'm going to share uh, five different topics with you today that I think can really be beneficial in your business. Um, and I want to share uh, actually an, another screen just so we kind of cover all the different trainings we're going to go through. We've already gone through and we will go through kind of moving forward. So if everyone can see my screen. Um, so this is again, our, our seven week, um, our seven week series. Uh, this is session number three. Uh, the first two sessions were led by by Eric, uh, who, who is, you know, our, our sales leader at WFG national title here in Arizona, um, where on July 29th, he covered our market update report. If you're not familiar with that, or you weren't able to attend, definitely connect, uh, with Eric uh, or Heidi on that as that absolutely an incredible, uh, you know, industry leading, uh, data provider that can provide you with a weekly email market report on cities and zip codes that very easy to digest dynamic report, easy to share on social media, easy to turn into shareable information in email or, or share on video. And then uh, last week he went through the My Home Experience. That is the Uber Amazon for escrow. I like to call it the Domino's Pizza Tracker of the real estate transaction. It really sh provides transparency and insight into where you are at, where the lender's at, where your clients are at in the transaction at all times. So again, it's just a window right into where is that transaction when it is in that 45 day escrow period, your clients come out um, the other side of the transaction feeling more informed, feeling like they're you know, more communicated with more effectively. If they had more access to what was happening, there's no question uh, that you were working, right? That they were informed, they're happier, they're more likely to refer you and use you again. So that's, those are the results of using that. That's an actual award-winning 
uh, award-winning piece of technology that you have access to and your clients again will also have access to it so it's an extension we built that for you it's an extension of your business that you can provide to your clients today we're covering uh, five key areas for business growth now uh, next week we're going to dive into setting up your CRM if you already have a CRM I'm going to show you how to use that more effectively if you don't have one I'm going to help you choose one and I'm going to show you all the reasons why you should be using one in your business um, and and who uses them how they use them very effectively the following week we're going to dial in uh, to your online presence we're going to take a look at what's showing up when someone does a search for you because we know that 90% of these people that engage with you that connect with you that that know you that are referred to you they search for you on Google because Google is kind of that all-knowing um, you know gateway to the internet and uh, if, if we know that 90% of people are going to search for you on Google before they reach out to you, whether they're referred to you or somebody that you met at an event or, or whatever it might be, or a past client, um, we want to make sure that what they see online for you really resonates effectively. It shows that you're likable, it shows you're professional, it shows that you're creating success. Okay, it shows that you have a marketing skill and marketing prowess. And we can accomplish all that together. I'm gonna to show you how to do that. Um, August 26th, we're going, or excuse me, then the following session, September 2nd, we're gonna dive into conversion, how to master being top of mind. Uh, and, and that's a really good one. I get into psychology, which I love to spend a lot of time in the, psych, the world of psychology, how to really influence people, how to, how to occupy their mind share. Uh, and then we're gonna finish uh, with, with Eric on September 9th. He's going to share with us how to create social media leads that actually convert. So through some circle prospecting um, type type strategy. So really excited you guys for this whole series of sessions. If you can attend each one of these, it's going to be worth your time. Uh, I try to keep these to about 45 minutes, um, but sometimes I get really long winded and, and end up taking an hour. So I apologize ahead of time if this goes a full hour. Um, but I will say this, it's going to be worth it. Uh, every one of these sessions will definitely be worth it for you guys. And then if you would do me a favor, invite one of your colleagues, invite somebody else to, to uh, come along with you on the ride because you can both level each other up together, share some of your strategies, some of your top takeaways together. Okay. So let's dive right into this. Uh, let's get rocking and rolling. And if anybody has any questions along the way, feel free to simply unmute yourself, ask, type it into chat, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, uh, suits your fancy okay and i'll get that that question answered as quickly as possible so i will provide a replay for this um and again the the the, the worst question is the one you know the only bad question i should say is the one that's not asked you guys so definitely i love feedback i love questions comments you know whatever you want to interject uh feel free to do so so again we're going to cover five key areas for business growth now and these are five areas i think we should be focused on not just right now but moving forward Okay. And I'm going to get pretty interactive with some of this. So again, if you, if, if anything is a little unclear, uh, definitely stop me. I'm happy to, again, you know, take, uh, take questions at any point. So, um, here's one thing we do know. Okay. Uh, and you guys know who I am. So we've kind of covered that digital marketer. Um, you, you may not know, I, I do quite a bit of work with Inman News. And if, by the way, if you're not familiar with Inman News, definitely take a look at Inman.com. Register for their newsletter. Um, they put out on a weekly basis some, some of the industry's best uh, information, articles, videos on sales, technology, and marketing, marketing as it relates to, to helping you level up your business. I know, and I talk to a lot of agents that are generating more business because they are subscribed to that Inman newsletter. Um, so I do quite a bit of work with Inman and then the areas in white here are all areas that I really specialize in from a digital marketing standpoint. So from branding to creating differentiation for you to positioning you as an authority, as an expert, as a thought leader in whatever space that you really want to get into, um, to helping you again, enhance your online presence, leverage social media more effectively, more strategically, um, get into the world of you know, lead generation. If you're not already there. If you're already doing lead generation, you know, taking a look at how can we help you convert more? How can we lower the cost for you? Right. Um, and, and so I spent a lot of my time again in that space, understanding what are the best tools, products, platforms, systems, uh, that are on the market that are available to you. So help helping you navigate through a lot of that stuff. So 
kicking off this presentation, right? Five key areas of business growth. Now we know that we're in a life event market and we know that also that buyers and sellers decide to make a move based on some sort of life event, whether they're upsizing, downsizing, job relocation, buying a second home, whatever that looks like, but they want to enhance or change their lifestyle in one way, shape or form, right? Right now is a massive life event market. As you know, inventory is way down. Um, you know, there is a lot of pent up demand that still exists because people frankly are uh, afraid to let people into their homes. They're afraid to go into other people's homes uh, for the most part. So there's a lot of pent up demand. So right now we may not be as busy as we typically are, or we may find ourselves busier than normal, but just not doing as many transactions. Um, and Susan, yeah, I'll definitely uh, share this replay with you. Um, so life event market, just keep in mind, this is a massive life event market. And one of my favorite coaches, uh, OG coach Mike Ferry, you know, father of, of Tom Ferry, said that the new conversation that we should be, be talking to our, our sphere, our network about is not whether you need to buy or sell or you're still considering moving, it's how's the family. And it's amazing when we go in to a conversation from a place of empathy, right, from just a place of sincerity, authenticity, how that conversation turns into an opportunity for us versus if we start with, some sort of promotional language, right? Some sort of sales related language. Um, are we salespeople? Absolutely, right? We're definitely salespeople. But if you think about what a salesperson is, is they're a master of relationships, right? And that's really what we need to focus on is, is how can we master our relationships, right? How can we become more likable? How can we become more empathetic towards uh, the people that we're that we're, we want to generate business from. And so the first strategy that I want to cover is how to embrace your people, okay? How to embrace your people. And when I say embrace your people, that is how can we build stronger, more long-lasting relationships with people? Uh, because we know that it is difficult, very, very difficult to manage at any one time more than about 20 to 30 active, ongoing relationships. Studies show that humans can't really manage anything more than that. And we, we all have a lot more relationships than just 20 to 30 in our business lives, right? We probably have 50 to 100 or more. If we look at all the leads we might have, we look at our sphere of influence, we look at referrals we've gotten, we look at just kind of the culmination of all these people we've engaged with in a business capacity or have the opportunity to, it could potentially be in the hundreds, if not thousands. How do we manage all of those relationships? Well, we all know the answer to that, right? It's we have to leverage technology for that, right? Unfortunately, for those that maybe haven't started using a CRM or a spreadsheet of some sort, I'd prefer the CRM, but if you're not using anything or maybe you're using note cards or, or we have something, you know, some, something in your handwriting or we're, we have all of our contacts in our email, we need to get them all into one location. So what I'd recommend is we, we take all their information, we download it, right? We get all these contacts and we, we put them in one spot and I, I actually want to do a screen share. I'm going to show you um, an easy way to do this over, you know, over or either Google or if you're using an iPhone over, uh, over iCloud. So let's say you're using an Android or if you have all your contacts that are backing up to Google, you can simply, and here's what I like to do. Every single one of our contacts is a potential opportunity for us, right? It's a potential you know, person that could refer us, um, recommend us to somebody you know, has a neighbor, has a friend, has a family member that may have a real estate need that can help us grow our business. So what I like to do is take all of my contacts and drop them into a CRM. I'm talking every single one, right? Once they're all in one place, then we can go through and we can kind of label them and tag them and we can remove people, but let's get them all into one location. So so again, if you're on Android or you're backing your contacts up to Google, simply go to contacts.google.com. And on the left-hand side, you're gonna see this scrollable column go all the way to the bottom and click on export. And once you click on export, you're gonna see a little window pop up that says export contacts. It's gonna allow you to export every one of your contacts right out of Google in a CSV format. So I'd click on export. That's going to then export those out. I can save those right to my desktop. And once I have those contacts in a file like this, I can then add them into a CRM. I can add them into a mail, an email marketing platform, like a MailChimp. 
Um, I can add them into multiple different services, right? That'll perform outreach uh, for me. That'll, that'll ensure that I stay top of mind with them. Okay. But we need to get them all into one location. Now, if you use an iPhone, what we'll do is we'll actually go to iCloud. And if you're not familiar with this, simply go to iCloud.com. Okay. You're going to see a screen that looks like this. You'll log in with your Apple ID and password. Okay, and then you'll simply click on contacts. Okay. Once you click on contacts, what you'll do is you're going to do a couple of things. Very bottom left, you're going to see a little gear icon. That's called your actions menu. You're going to click on that and you're going to go up and click on select all. It's going to select every single one of your contacts. And so I've got 7,100 contacts on my phone, which is basically I've been carrying around contacts for the last, well, since I had a, a phone. So 20 years, however long that's been. Um, probably need to go through these at some point. So I've got 7,000 contacts here selected. So I went up to this select all, right? Now that I've been selected, I go back down to the gear icon, click on that, and then I go export V card. So I'm gonna click on export V card here, okay? And that's going to then allow me to download all of my contacts, okay? If you have an iPhone and you go and download all of your contacts into this V card file format, you will save your contacts into a single file right onto your desktop or into your documents. You'll need to perform one additional step. Again, this is just for us iPhone users that are using iCloud to download our contacts. We'll need to convert that file into that CSV file type, okay? Hopefully I'm not losing anybody. But again, CSV is simply just a spreadsheet you can open with Excel, okay? CSV stands for comma separated values, okay? So it's just, it's just a file type that you'll, you're pretty used to. If you've ever gotten a list from a title company, anything like that, it's always in CSV format. And it's just a very universal spreadsheet file type for contacts. So, okay, wait, Aaron, which, what did you click on to get the file to pull up? Yeah, so the little gear icon on the very bottom left. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we click then, on export V card. Oh, export V, okay. Yep. So um, if you have an iPhone, let me know. I'll actually put a link in chat to, to a, what's called a, a file converter. It's going to convert your file from that uh, VCF to CSV, okay? So you guys just hang with me. Um, so VCF to CSV, just posted a link into chat. I'm gonna actually click on that for a second just in case anybody's going to do this. This is what it looks like, VCF to CSV. Again, VCF, VCF is just the contact format that Apple uses. CSV is just the universal format. All you'll simply do is just choose your file that you just downloaded from iCloud, wherever it's at, click on open, and then just click on convert now. That's it, that's all you need to do, okay? Once you do that, it'll actually, it'll then have you download, it'll convert that file to a CSV and you'll download it right to your desktop or your documents. Once you have that, then you'll go to your CRM, you guys. Okay. Then you're going to go to your CRM. If you're not using one, I think Lion Desk is a very easy to use CRM. There's some great CRMs out there that are, that are better than Lion Desk. Um, you know, I really like Chime. It's one of my favorite CRMs, different price point, right? Lion Desk, $25 a month, Chime to $300 a month. Okay. So um, I really like uh, my favorite CRM right now, just straight up CRM would be follow up boss. Follow up boss is going to be right around a hundred dollars a month. Okay. So depending on what you're looking to accomplish and depending on how you're running your business and then also depending on your budget, uh, I've got some great recommendations uh, for you. And by the way, feel free to, um, to reach out to Heidi or Eric, uh, you know, with, with any, questions that you, you might have after this session. And, uh, you know, if, if Heidi and Eric decide that they want to pull me into a meeting or a conversation, um, they have access to my calendar. They can easily, easily do so you guys at their discretion. Um, WFG is my client. So I, I work for, for Eric and Heidi. Um, okay. So you guys, if you want, you can take that CSV file that's on your desktop and you can simply go to your CRM, click on import, and you can drag it and drop it right into your CRM, okay? 
once it's in your, your CRM. And again, CRM stands for a customer relationship management system. So it's just a way to manage contacts, right? And I'll show you some really, really valuable features, some really neat things we can do with your CRM. Um, but what I would highly recommend we do once we have our contacts in here is we simply organize them, which is the least fun activity in the entire world. Okay. I get that. Okay. It's, it's worse than sticking to some, you know, workout program way worse, way worse. It's, it's literally the worst thing you could do. Okay. It's worse than doing the dishes. Okay. But it is the best thing you can do for your business. Because if you think about it like this, when you decide to walk away from real estate at some point, and I love this business because you can pretty much, you know, you, you can work it from, from hospice almost. Um, it's amazing. But I will say this. Um, if you decide to sell your business at some point, what are you going to sell? You're going to sell your book of business. You're going to sell your contacts. Guess what? You're going to sell that CSV file. That is going to be the sellable asset for your business when you decide to leave real estate at some point. And that could be very, very, very valuable. I know of agents that have sold their CSV file. I'm not even kidding. Their CSV file or really their login, their CRM login for upwards of a couple million bucks. So again, this is the value. This is the asset in your business. It is you, right? Don't get me wrong, but it's also all your relationships, all these contacts. So again, I can't stress enough the importance of utilizing a CRM, getting all your contacts in one location, okay? Okay, so this isn't a, a session on CRMs, right? But this is a session on embracing our people, um, which is key area of focus number one and probably the biggest one. Once you have your contacts into your CRM, okay, we'll click on them. And what we want to do, the most important thing you can do with your contacts is you can tag them which is a way of organizing or categorizing them. Tag them based on their interests, based on their hobbies, based on their passions, based on who they are, based on their price range, based on their income, right? And so what I want you to do, and again, I'm help, happy to help, help you one-on-one -on -one personalize how you organize your contacts, but I want you to come up with a system, okay? And a system might be, if this was a buyer, you may go, you may type in buyer, and then if they're an A, B, C, or D buyer, A buyer would be they've used you multiple times or, or they're very, a very hot or active buyer. You could say like active or you could say um, passive or you could say inactive, right? If, if they were a buyer, um, depending on their price range, you could say 1.5 to, to 2 million, right? Tag them. If you know that they love horses, you could say horses, right? right? Categorizing them, tagging them based on their interests, their hobbies, their needs, their passions, clicking on save. Now, if we come across, well, there's really two benefits to this. Number one is, let's say a new property comes on the market that's in the, you know, one and a half to $2 million range. We can easily pull up our one and a half to $2 million buyers. We can see an entire list of them and we can shoot out. I can simply, I can simply do a easy search for my, you know, one to one and a half to $2 million buyers up here. You know, let's just say, you know, 1.5, I think this tag works or one five or so anyway, there's, I, I forget the tag I use, but you'd know the tag you use. So you'd type it in up here or you could say horses, right? Here's all the contacts that have tagged horse or horses, right? I select them and I simply click on email and I can email all of them right from here all at once. And let's just say a horse property came online. Or maybe this has nothing to do with finding a home for them. Maybe this just has to do with us staying in touch with them with personalized information. Maybe, maybe there was a new horse ranch that just opened up and they might have an interest in taking a look at. I would just type in new horse ranch, you know, or new horse facility where they could board and ride their horses, right? Okay, so new horse facility. And then I'd say, hi, insert lion desk field, and I'm just gonna select their first name and have that populated in so that the email is personalized. And so it looks like it came right from you. You took the time to just let them know about a new horse facility. Hi, hi John, I just came across something you might find interesting, a new horse facility in North Scottsdale somewhere in Cave Creek, wherever. Um, 
check it out. Let me know if you go. Hope all's well. Boom, click on send. Okay, you guys, that's it. Now, when this goes out, it'll say, hi, David. Hi, Jane. It'll be personalized to all your recipients. You guys, if you haven't dove into this world of utilizing technology to really uh, simplify your life, this is a great introduction. This is a great introduction to that. Now we'll go ahead and just click on send and send. And then that email now goes out to both these recipients. The other nice thing is too, now if I click on this contact, it'll actually show that I sent that email out to them in my activity timeline. Okay, so I get to see all my correspondence with them over here. In addition, I could have, with LionDesk, I could have sent them a text. Um, and there's a, a few other features that you, that you can definitely tap into. So again, I just wanna share with you the importance and value of utilizing a CRM to embrace your people, okay? So we talked about downloading all their information, putting it in one place, okay? LionDesk is a great option. Maybe you already have a CRM, great. I'd be happy to help you really leverage that, you know, get the most out of that that you can. Um, hold on one second, guys. My, my window just popped out for some reason. Uh, in, in addition, me, the CRM you're using, you may not be happy with it, right? It might not be the best CRM for you. Maybe you'd rather use something else. Well, if that's the case, you guys, again, I'm happy to help direct you into the right direction with regards to which CRM would actually be a better fit for you, okay? Um, so we're putting all of our contacts into one place, we're tagging them, we're adding their interests and hobbies, and then here's my goal for you. Perform some outreach. Call to, connect to, text to daily, okay? I'm gonna actually give you a fun little download, uh, a, a little you know takeaway document. It's a 30-day challenge that you can uh, you can leverage uh, by the end of the session. Okay, so here's what I would say. All of our outreach though, we're always going to lead with empathy. It's always, how are you? Are you safe and are you sane? Which is my, my favorite line. Um, you know, how's it going, right? Are you sick and wearing a mask yet? Um, man, there have been some creative masks. I don't know if you guys have seen some really, really creative masks out there. Uh, pretty funny stuff. So, okay, so key area of focus number two, powering up your online presence. Again, we're gonna get into this a lot deeper in, a, in an upcoming session. Um, so our session, uh, actually two sessions from now on August 26th, we're gonna get really deep into this. But a couple things I want you to take note of, pay attention to right now. Um, number one would be, do you have a Google My Business profile? Okay, do you have a Google My Business profile? If you're not familiar with what that is, okay, then I'd highly encourage you to uh, attend my session. And if you want, in the meantime, Go ahead and create a, a Google business profile by simply going to business.google.com. So business.google.com. That's going to allow you to, it'll walk you right through a process of creating a profile that will show up in the Google search results when someone does a search for you. So if I do a search for John Gluck of the Gluck Group, you'll notice that one of the first things that you see on the right hand side is this profile. This is his Google business profile. This shows up in Google search when someone does a search for him or a search related to anything, any service that he provides. He also will have a listing show up, a profile listing show up in Google Maps. Okay, this is the Google business profile. Um, so that it is oftentimes the very first thing that people see when they do a search for you. So it's a great way to make an awesome first impression. Uh, in addition, you'll want a Yelp business profile. The reason you want a Yelp business profile as well is for many different reasons. Uh, the main reason is Yelp has a lot of clout, a lot of integrity, and people are searching for service providers on Yelp. Uh, in addition, Yelp has a good relationship with Google. Your Yelp business profile will show up in the top of your search results uh, on Google. And Last thing I want to share is that if you have an iPhone and you do a search for a luxury real estate agent in Scottsdale in Paradise Valley or you know, a real estate agent near you and you just simply ask Siri that question, Siri will turn to Yelp business for those results. And we know that voice search, which is asking Siri, asking Google, um, you know, asking that you're a smart home device that you might have, 
whether it's a Sonos device, a Amazon, you know, uh, Echo, uh, or any an Apple HomePod, you ask those devices uh, where something is, who something, you know, who is a great real estate agent near me. They're going to either turn to Google or Yelp for that response. Okay, and we know that those types of searches, those voice searches, are up substantially. They're over twenty five percent of all searches are done through voice at this point. Um, LinkedIn. How's your LinkedIn profile? What is your LinkedIn profile? Does it create and tell us? Does it create an emotional response and tell a story when we land on your LinkedIn profile? Right? Does that big you know, photo or big banner in the background? Are we utilizing that effectively? Again, telling a story when someone lands on that profile. Do we have a recent headshot, All right? Have we totally filled out that profile in its entirety? Um, oftentimes, your, Google, your LinkedIn profile is the first thing that people see and when they do a search for you. Um, it's your first result on Google. Your website, do you have a website? If not, we need to chat, okay? There's some great websites website options out there. Um, one of my favorite ones is actually a company called Squarespace. Uh, and the reason I love Squarespace is, is you can create a beautiful, luxurious, fantastic looking website for, you know, under 30 bucks a month, right? Incorporating IDX into that as well. Um, and so they've got some incredible templates to choose from, incredible options to choose from. Um, so I'm always very, you know, cost and price sensitive with everything that I do. I mean, I've led agents through $10,000 custom websites. I've been there, done that. And I'll tell you for the most part, that's a waste of money. So why, why go through the, the pain, the headache of a six month website build that costs 10 grand when you can, when we can drop in, um, we go to squarespace.com and for 30 bucks a month, we, we can select a very unique, very professional template where we can drop our own beautiful imagery into we can totally customize all the pages all the sections has property search and again it's very very inexpensive so highly recommend um, if you don't already have a website um, this is a great option if you do have a website and maybe you're not generating any results from it it's not getting the traffic you think you know it should it should generate for you if you're not generating leads from it then again you guys let's definitely chat I'd love to uh, take a look at it and give you some recommendations. Um, so, and kind of moving through this, you guys, your brokerage profile uh, is a very important profile. We want to create consistency amongst all of our profiles. That's the goal with our online presence. High resolution profile photo. We want to use background photos, cover photos that really evoke emotion, that tell a story, okay? Um, and if we're on social media, we want to make sure that we're updating consistently. We want to make sure that we're engaging with people consistently. We want to make sure we're using it very intentionally um, because if we're not, then the social media algorithms aren't going to show our posts to anybody and we're not going to be, we're not really using the platforms very effectively. So I'll go into that a little more in a future session. I spent a lot of time in the social media space as well. Um, wait, so wait, Aaron, when yeah. you make update profile photos, does that say weekly? Weekly posting. Yeah. So, so oh, for your social posting. media profiles. Yep. So, so Sorry, background my photos. screen was covering that oh, word. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So background photos, you know, the background and cover photos on all your profiles, realtor.com, LinkedIn, yeah. uh, you know, Facebook, personal and business pages really want to use something that really, again, it tells a story, right. Versus just a shot of a home or a skyline or a sunset, mm -hmm. something like that. Yep. And then, and then if we get any reviews, we want to make sure we respond to every review that comes in, okay? Um, whether it's good or bad. If you get a negative review, like a one star, let me know. Uh, I, I, there's various ways we can kind of deal with that and, and have you come out, um, you know, really in a, in a positive way on the other side. Uh, and what I would say with your posting, with your sharing of information, right now, we need to push for leading with education educate if you're if you're if you're really uh, unsure of what to share on social media what to post especially on your business page or linkedin or anywhere else that you're posting you can't lose with leading with education just educating people on what's going on educating them on what your perspective your opinion your take is on what's happening right now and what they should do okay people are dying for leadership 
right? When you step up and you take a stance, you take an opinion on what people should do, you're going to be seen as the authority. You're going to be seen as the thought leader. People are going to then turn to you and go, you know, it was Kim that told me I should do this, right? It's Kim that kind of guided me through this. She's my go-to, right? You're going to earn and, and build a lot of rapport and trust with your, with your audience if you lead with education. Um, so key area number three, empower local businesses, right? We work with a lot of business owners, business people. How can we help them and assist them right now? Right? There's, a lot of, there's a lot of business owners that are hurting right now, um, especially some of these small business owners. What can we do? I, I came up with a concept called adopt a local business or business person. Now, um, select one, one person. I guarantee we all, if we went through our contacts, we have business owners, business people in our network. If we reached out to them and said, you know, hey, uh, you, know, you know, Sally, business owner, um, I am looking at really helping a single business owner. I wanted to talk to you about, you know, your business, about what's going on. Like, how has this pandemic affected your business? Um, could you stand to use a little more, you know, a, 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 a little more, uh, you know, maybe exposure for your product or your service, right? Um, because I'm, what I want to do is I want to showcase uh, a local business or, or business person and share and maybe interview you or just share information about your business on my social media, right? So that my entire audience gets exposed to your business. Because again, I know you're going through a lot of, a lot of pain, a lot of challenge right now, potentially in your business, a lot of, there's, there's a lot of change that's happened. And so, you know, I just, I, I think this is a way that, that I can help you. This is a way that I can give back right now. Um, and so if that's something I can help you with, let me know, right? I guarantee they won't say no. And if you haven't, if you haven't done something like interviewed somebody over Zoom, right, that might be a great opportunity for you to kind of step out of your comfort zone if you've been hesitant to do that, but know that that's valuable. That might be a great opportunity to do something like that. Or you could even just interview them in a written format, ask them a series of maybe five questions, uh, and then just write down the answers. And then you could post that in an article type format. You could create a page on your website. You could post it right to social media, right? Some great ways to leverage this, this tag that business owner. And what they're going to do is they're going to actually reshare that with their audience, their network, therefore giving you now exposure to their entire network, right? Great way to kind of cross promote each other. Um, maybe they have gift cards or gift certificates that you could tap into. Maybe you buy some of those and you give those out in exchange for reviews for you, right? So, you know, maybe you spend $200 by 10 gift, gift certificates, $20 each um, to a local, maybe the, you, uh, you know, you're connected to someone that owns a bakery or a dry cleaner um, and you give out those gift cards um, and in exchange, you simply say, hey, would you mind, you know, just leaving a review for me? Um, so some of these things work incredibly well. Uh, and what I would say too is, again, you guys, a great opportunity to get yourself out there in a valuable way. Show that you're doing more than just trying to collect a commission check because we all do much, much more than that. But unfortunately, the stigma attached to, uh, to real estate agents is that, you know, sometimes people think that we're, we're overpaid, that we don't do a lot of work when in, in reality, we absolutely do uh, and earn every dollar of commission um, that, that we generate. But what we don't do a good job of is showing what we actually do, right? We do a lot behind the scenes. I think putting some of that work up front, putting it in the public eye, showing a little more transparency into our business um, can really change the way that people look at us, right? Can change the way that uh, it can change people's perspectives on the services we provide and what we offer on how challenging the real estate uh, transactional experience actually is because we all know that's not an easy thing. Um, there's never going to be a buy now button on, on Zillow um, where someone can just easily purchase a home without, without wanting to, wanting to you know, ask a lot of questions, right? So there's always going to be a need for real estate agent. I truly believe that, even though I'm a technology guy. Um, so, so again, empowering local business was number three. Number four, show up, listen, and engage on social media every day. And here's what really I'm saying here is you guys be intentional. Social media usage, it's up over 70%, okay? So the average Facebook user, and there are quite a few of us, over 200 million in the United States, over 80% of, uh, of US adults are on Facebook. 
are you are on Facebook for over an hour a day now, right? Checking in over 20 times a day, right? Absolutely insane. Insane. So pre COVID 45 minutes a day, checking in 17 times a day. Now it's over an hour. I don't know what we're all doing on Facebook. You guys, what the heck are we doing? Seriously? <laughs> um, nothing good. That's for sure. I'm sure. Um, here's the deal. You probably are doing some good, but what I would say is be more intentional with that. Good. I'm going to show you a quick strategy before we uh, jump into carry of focus number five and then conclude for the day. Um, but what I would say is you guys show up and check in daily though, but I want you to be intentional. And I want you to be so intentional that you even consider time blocking. I am a huge proponent of time blocking. You know, if it's not in my calendar, then it doesn't happen. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I'm not going to just going to spontaneously start posting to social media. Like it just doesn't really happen unless it gets time blocked in. So what I would say is here's the other thing too. It is actually more valuable for you to engage with other people's content than it is to post on social media. So you may not be a big poster, or a big share. That's fine. Check in to people that you know can make a difference in your business and comment or share their posts, right? That's how you can really move the needle and enhance and build relationships because you know what it does when someone comments on one of your posts on social media, you get a serotonin release, right? You get this little dopamine hit and that hit is something that you will remember for a while. It opens up what's called a feedback loop. Um, you start getting into some psychology and physiology there, but really it creates, it will actually keep you top of mind with that person for weeks because you commented in a meaningful way on one of their posts, right? So a lot of value in that. Now I'm going to say, when I say meaningful, I mean, meaningful is a combination of valuable and authentic, right? It's like, it's not just you saying, Oh, that, that sounds great. Or it looks good. Or leaving an emoji, right? It's like something thoughtful. That's at least five words long, right? That's, that's kind of the goal. But if you, here's the deal. I'm going to show you a quick, a quick little tip where you set up an MVP list. So you're intentional with your time. Um, so I'm going to jump back onto Facebook. Okay. And I'm going to go right to my newsfeed. And I want to show you a couple of things here. So let's let this load up here. Okay. So here I am on Facebook and um, you'll notice this is my newsfeed. Right. And here I am scrolling through my newsfeed, which is always a scary proposition to do um, on video, especially one that's being recorded. Um, but you'll notice how one of my first posts <laughs> is, of course, there's dogs and babies, right? Dogs and babies, um, cats too. Uh, so Justin Tucker. But you'll notice next to Justin Tucker, you'll see this little blue star. Anybody familiar with what that is? So that blue star is called see first. I basically told Facebook, I want to see his posts at the top of my newsfeed every time he posts. You can blue star people up to 25 people on Facebook. The way you do that is you simply put your mouse over their name and you'll see three little buttons under their little contact card that pops up. You're gonna see friends, you're gonna see, it's gonna say following and then you're gonna see message. What you want to do is put your mouse over following and you'll notice it says in your newsfeed, see first and default. And it's just usually just set to default. What we can do is we can override this and say, Facebook, I want to see the new posts at the top of my newsfeed for this person. So click on see first. You can do that for up to 25 people. Okay. Who are the 25 people you're going to do that for? Okay. I would highly encourage you to do that for the 25 people that have referred someone to you that are meaningful to you from a business standpoint. You guys, again, Facebook's fun from a personal standpoint. Don't get me wrong. But if we're going to use it, if we're going to be on here, if we're going to, if we're going to allocate and invest our lives into this social media platform, let's get a return from it, right? Now a return, we can get a, 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 an emotional return from relationships, but we can get a financial return too. Let's stay top of mind. Let's dive deeper into the relationships that we have that are very beneficial to us from a business standpoint. Um, so anytime, maybe Justin posts, not every time, but sometimes I'm going to make a comment, right? And it's going to be a meaningful comment. I'm not going to do it every time because that could kind of get a little creepy, right? It's like, wow. Is this person stalking me, you know, but I may do it every other time. Here's another person, blue star. Okay. You'll notice blue star. 
Okay. I want my blue stars to show up first. Okay. And then I can go through and look at like, you know, what my ex-girlfriend from high school is doing and like, you know, all these other people that like are, you know, don't play a role in my life at all, but it's just entertaining to look at, you know what I mean? But again, this is us being very intentional with, with, with Facebook. Okay. Um, okay. So let's jump back into our, our presentation here, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of conclude here. But again, when we, when we reach out to people, it's very empathetic, uh, forward, you know, how are you? How's the family? Um, la my last key area of focus or my last tip for you today is, are you leveling up? You guys, are we staying, not only staying relevant, but we're staying ahead of the curve. Are we continuing to create, continuing to evolve, innovate? And a way we do that is creating and refining our skills. Like, are we learning new things? Are we diving deeper into things that we're already doing? And you guys, these are the things that like get put on the back burner because, you know, they're not high priority. They're not super important. They just, you know, but these are the things that can create massive differences in the way that ways that we analyze and look at different situations and scenarios, the different ways that we can really identify opportunities and connect with people deeper. So these would include things like, like diving into YouTube and watching videos that can really make a difference in your business. Things about marketing and branding and um, how to create differentiation and how to, how to, uh, you know, emotional intelligence, really how to connect with people in a, people in a deeper way. Um, you know, I mean, gosh, you can learn how to build a house by watching YouTube videos, audiobooks. I love audible, right? Audible is an incredible resource. Um, I am, I have during this whole like pandemic, I haven't consumed a lot of books because I've been just working nonstop. But typically when I was in my car more, um, you know, last year I went through, I read or listened to 42 audible books. Right. Right. I mean, you know, it just, it helped me level up in a massive way. Podcasts, you don't dive into podcasts. Podcasts are incredible. Uh, second season of my podcast, the, the, um, the influence project is launching in the next several weeks. Um, you guys highly recommend that blogs, et cetera. There's some great online courses you can dive into. Uh, I highly encourage you guys dive into these sales related relationship related. Um, you know, learn, you know, you know, l l learn the art of, uh, you know, of, of mastering and crafting your morning through, um, through maybe meditation or some yo or yoga or, um, or, or, you know, whatever that looks like, right? Uh, you know, positive affirmations for yourself, uh, journaling, you know, I mean, there's some great, great resources out there that really can change your life. I mean, it's amazing how just doing these small daily, uh, daily behaviors, incorporating these small habits in your, in your routine can change your entire life. It's incredible stuff. So again, level up, whether it's you leveling up your mindset, leveling up your skill set, leveling up your body, whatever that is, you guys, I highly encourage you to do that. Now is the time to be doing that. Um, everything, everything you have, your business, your relationships will all benefit from it. Um, there are some great, great resources available on, on my team's website, themoderndayagent.com. I want to just take a second and show you that. Uh, in addition, I mentioned inman.com, which is another great, uh, a, a, you know, a great resource for you. Uh, this is my team's website, themoderndayagent.com. We've got a product library here. We've got our university with courses and trainings in there. We've got a blog. Um, we've got all of our events. Uh, here's my team. If you click on our team, it'll show you my entire team, my West team. And again, you guys, I am a, a digital marketing consultant with a company called West. Uh, West stands for Williston Enterprise Solutions and Technology. And it's the sister company of WFG National Title where Heidi and Eric work. So, um, so this is a very different role for the title and escrow space. Um, typically title and escrow companies don't hire outside consultants to work with their clients, to work with their brokerages, but WFG national title is different. And as you'll see, and as you'll learn, um, in, in very, very soon is WFG does things a lot differently. So if you have any questions on any sort of product tool resource that you come across, reach mm -hmm. out to me. I probably know a lot about that resource. I know the, the positives, the negatives, the strengths, the weaknesses, the costs, um, how you can implement and integrate that into your business effectively. Um, so again, you guys reach out to me. I'm a resource for WFG, which means I'm a resource 
for you guys. Um, okay, so in concluding, I mentioned that I have a, 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 a download, a little 30 day challenge that I'll share with you. I'll share the link with Heidi and then Heidi, can you email that out to everybody that's yeah. on the call today? Okay, perfect. So 30 day challenge and it just covers those five different areas we just touched on. Um, and with that said, I uh, really appreciate everyone attending today. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I'll be back. So I'll be back for three more sessions over the next three weeks. Uh, hopefully you got some value out of today's session. Um, this is kind of what I do. So I bring a lot of value to the table. Uh, if you didn't find value, uh, let me know. I, I would love to know what I could do a little better. Seriously, uh, I'm always open to feedback. It's the only way to improve. Uh, and so any questions on anything we just covered? Okay, if you, if you have a question that maybe comes up, pops into your head later, you just don't wanna ask right now, uh, reach out to Heidi, reach out to Eric and they will get uh, you in touch with me. Or you can simply go to getwithaaron.com, schedule a 15 minute, 20, 15 minute uh, call. Sorry, I think I reduced that down to 15 minutes. Um, but we'll, I'll make sure you get your question answered. Uh, and so put you in the right direction. You guys, thank you so much for attending. I appreciate your time uh, and appreciate you investing in your business. And thank you for your partnership with WFG. And I look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. So, Thank you, Aaron. That was guys. awesome. Awesome. My pleasure. See you.